Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the Waldorf Handwork Projects for the third grade. We're using the live education curriculum and I have an in-depth review of this curriculum as well as a series of videos related to the supplies you'll need for third grade, the books and additional resources that we've used in the past as well as our main lesson books for third grade. All right, so I want to briefly show you the curriculum and then explain where the handwork projects are included within the curriculum and how to do them within the third year. So the curriculum, uh, as you can see, is quite small. This one is by Live Education. It comes with six of these books, which will make up your main lesson blocks for the year. You have a history block on the myths of a cotton sumer. And we did a lot of watercolors for this one, as was uh, suggested in the main lesson book. There's also a block on literature, grammar, spelling, and word families. And this one happens to be one that you can run parallel with another main lesson block, as these lessons can be short and repetitive and work throughout uh, probably the whole entire year. We have another history block, two of them, on Hebrew myths and culture. You have creation and patriarchs and prophets and kings. One of these has mostly lessons for the main lesson block. And then the other one has some festival ideas, celebrations, music, uh, cooking, the Hebrew alphabet, and some form drawing, as well as some additional lessons. The math block for this year is time, weight, measure, and money, the math of practical life. This is going to go through linear measurement, time, and money, as well as continue with the four basic math operations. It's just going to get a little bit more complicated with those four operations as they have been previously introduced in the first grade. You also want to keep up with your daily math and your mental math. Humanity on Earth, Shelter, Clothing, and Farming. This is where you're going to find a lot of the handwork projects. You're going to find a lot of projects in general for either this main lesson block or what you can do is you can stretch this over the entire year and do one of your other main lesson blocks in the morning and then work on these activities in the afternoon since they lend themselves really well to afternoon work. You have some shelter building and you have some farming and of course you have clothing and at the back of the book there are a lot of ideas on different kinds of handwork projects you can do. Now because a third grade student is about nine years old, the student will be going through the nine-year change which is somewhat of a traumatic developmental transition. Some of the emotions your child might be feeling are a sense of loss, maybe confusion, uh, wanting to feel grounded and having purpose, but still feeling like everything that uh, they have known so far is starting to get kind of um, upset and shaken up a little bit. Uh, this follows the change that occurs at around seven, which is a time where the child is coming into an awareness or an understanding that there is a difference between the make-believe world that was difficult to distinguish when they were little versus reality. So when little children are are asking you about make-believe or is this true, uh, it's really hard for them to distinguish between fantasy and reality. And so when you make up stories, even if they're outlandish, young children will believe them as truth. After seven years, the student is starting to realize that there is this difference between fantasy and reality. At around nine years old, the child is going through another developmental transition. And some of the feelings and sentiments are that of trying to form an identity, coming to terms with the idea of having a past. Up until that point, the idea of of a past wasn't solidified with the student. They certainly could use the past tense of verbs. They could understand that things happened yesterday, but a true deep understanding of it doesn't really happen until about the nine year change. That's when you start to, in some ways, feel like time is speeding up. Time starts to take shape. Before that, it seemed like time was lasting forever. Weekends were forever. Summer vacation was forever. The school year was forever. There really wasn't this idea that 
uh, the school year was a set period of time and summer vacation was actually shorter. It was kind of like this endless linear movement of time. Uh, around nine, there's a better understanding of the cycles of time and how things start to repeat very regularly within a certain increment of time. Prior to that, a student might ask when his or her birthday is and not really understand that uh, it just passed a couple weeks ago and you still have 11 and a half months to go. There wasn't that deep understanding of what that really meant. At nine years old, uh, after the nine year transition, there's a better understanding of what it means to go a whole year before another birthday. And so you can see that even the math curriculum, the math main lesson block for this year, uh, coordinates with that developmental change. So now's a great time to talk about time and measurement because it's going to make a lot more sense for the student. All right, so let's look at some of the handwork projects that are typical for the third grade student. The third grade year is all about practical skills and lessons. The student's going to learn about time and measurement. And then in this main lesson book, the skills are going to be in shelter building, farming, and clothing. So in the portion on clothing, that's where you're going to find the most handwork projects. But in today's video, I don't want to just show you the handwork projects that are included in this main lesson block. I also want to share with you some of the other ideas that you can incorporate into the third grade year. So the handwork projects for third grade are going to start with garments. So anything that can be worn uh, with hats or caps, you can knit them or you can crochet them. You can move into scarves and sweaters um, and hand puppets and even some mittens if you uh, did some simple ones. Uh, then you want to move into some embroidery skills to uh, decorate and enhance those projects that you've made. Uh, wet felting ball um, or a mat. Uh, you can also sew little bags or shoulder bags. And you don't need to have fancy equipment for this. You can do hand stitching or you can do a loom. And if you don't have a loom, I'm going to show you an alternative, which is just a cardboard loom, which is really easy to make. And then you want to do some modeling with either beeswax or potter's clay. You can form really simple objects like birds or animals or eggs to relate to the stories that have been told in that year. And then for woodworking, you can work with barks and twigs for simple toys uh, for your doll table, for your nature table. And we're going to wait on using the carving tools until next year. I've also included some candle dipping since that's a practical skill that will work really well with the whole idea of being able to build your own shelter and then uh, and, and cook your own food and sew your own garments and of course uh, also light your way in the night. So having the ability to make candles, which is super easy and very enjoyable, is also going to be a great way to round out this year. All right, so the curriculum is going to go through a few examples on the handwork projects. Today I want to actually show you what those handwork projects look like that we've done in our homeschool over the years. So the first thing I want to show you is the yarn and the knitting needles that we use. We use Lamb's Pride and you can use the worsted weight as they get a little bit older and the bulky weight when they're younger because it's a little bit easier to work with the bulky weight yarn to begin with. Now at this point in third grade, uh, the students will have already learned how to knit and purl. You learn how to knit in first grade and then purl in second grade and then the projects can get a little bit more complex. So a typical first grade project would be to just knit like a square or a rectangle and then the teacher can work with the student in order to kind of just pinch it in the right place, add eyes and a little tail and then suddenly it turns into a little cat or some other little stuffed animal. So you're not using patterns early on, you're just doing something that's free form and then seeing where it takes you. And then once the students have mastered knitting, then in the second or third grade, then you can start on projects like this, which look complicated, but are actually really easy to make. It's really satisfying to finish a project like this. And then once you do a project like this, then you can use it with your math, your mental math, your daily math, since it's a, a ball that you can toss back and forth with other students and you can practice math facts. So this is a really beautiful, simple project to make. Uh, so then once you get into third grade, you can start to make things that are going to be garments. So this is 
a scarf that my oldest son knit when he was younger and then you can move into other projects this is probably a little bit more complicated for the third grade student but it's also really simple to make these ones happen to be ones that we purchased but if you see it's just knitting something that's going to be if you just do a rectangle then you can actually um, stitch them together you don't have to knit this in the round but you could as well and then you could forego this and then these could be the fingerless um, hand mittens. So this is another fairly simple project that once the student has mastered knitting and purling, then you can move on to some of these uh, projects that actually have purpose because third grade is all about having purpose and making things and doing things for uh, practical reasons. And so sewing and knitting and crocheting garments is going to be perfect for the third grade student. All right, so let me uh, show you some of the other things that you can be making in third grade. So weaving and simple sewing are going to be another thing that is perfect for the third grade student. Let me show you some examples of the looms that we have. Now we've had this one for years. I also wanna show you this one. This one's called the Original Lap Loom. It looks like this. It's a really good quality one. And you just need to prepare it by uh, looping your embroidery thread before your students start working on it. And you can see that it comes with a lot of these supplies. So this one seems to be a good option. But if you didn't wanna buy a, a wooden loom, I'm gonna show you how you can make one using cardboard. All right, so let me show you these looms that we've made. These are cardboard looms. I have tutorials on both kinds and they're really simple to make and use and of course they don't cost anything. So what's fantastic about these smaller ones is that you can do these in a matter of an afternoon. You don't need days and days and weeks and weeks to complete a project and you end up with this super cute little handbag. The handle is separate but you end up with a little um, pouch and they're just really fun and simple and easy to make. Then you can also do it in a circle, which can end up being a round circle, or in our case, for some reason, they keep bowing up into little bowls. And so my son made a really large one a few uh, years ago. You can see it looks like a bowl, but it also kind of looks like a hat as well. So that's um, a, a really simple weaving project that you can do. I would recommend using the thickest wool yarn that you have that way you are not doing this for hours and hours because the thinner the yarn you use the longer it's going to take you can see that this is pretty thick yarn so it didn't really take that long you can also do basket weaving i really like these kits that are from acorn naturalist there are a variety of kits depending on the age level from i think 8 to 12 years old they come with all the materials that you need in order to make these beautiful pine needle baskets we We've made these over the years. They have been really satisfying to make. They are super cute. They are functional. Uh, one year we use them to store all of our erasers in. And also the best part is that you're using found objects in nature. So it's a great environmental project, a great upcycling project. So this particular kit comes with the pine needles. They're empty now because we have since used them up. But we have found some pine needles in our area that happen to be long and suitable for making pine needle baskets. So now that we have the basic instructions, we can just go ahead and use the pine needles that we have in our area. I believe it came with the needle as well as the raffia. And then you can see here, this is one of the projects that we started. All right, so in addition to the bags that you can weave, you can also stitch your own bags. And this was a really simple stitching project. It's just hand stitched. And then we just made the little casing here and then the drawstring. And again, because this is practical, this fits perfectly with the third grade year. So little handbags, you can make them larger, you can make them shoulder bags. And I think what's really practical for today is to make them a little bit larger and make them into reusable grocery bags. And so for that project, you can use leftover fabric or uh, you know old shirts that you want to repurpose. And so that this is not just a really practical art for the third grade student but also a really great upcycling project all right so i want to show you one more loom that my 11 year old son really enjoyed when he was younger and this is loom and hook and this is to make mostly pot holders but you can do something 
uh, larger if you connect them all together. So it comes with all the tools. It's super, super simple. And again, if you want to get more creative with this, you could uh, upcycle t-shirts and you might need to do it on a larger loom and you could use t-shirt material and cut them into strips and then you would have just the right kind of, of uh, material in order to do the loom or, you know, in order to do the project. So this is something that uh, also has practical purposes. Uh, there's only so many pot holders <laughs> that you could use, but the idea is again to make something that's practical. All right, so let's move on to some of the other fiber arts. Something else that you can do in third grade and probably would be a good project to come before uh, the knitting since you'll end up making yarn by doing using your drop spindle, but it is to make your own yarn using wool and a drop spindle. So this is a gorgeous drop spindle. It was a little bit pricey, but you can also make your own and you can also get a, a, a less expensive version of this. But this is another great handwork activity. It takes a little bit of practice to get it going. And then once you've made your yarn, then you can actually use it to weave or to knit. And so I think being able to go from just having this to making something uh, is really fantastic. Now something else you can do with your wool is to do some wet felting. Now this is a project that we did for sixth grade, so this would be more complicated than the than the wet felting projects you'd want to do with a third grader, but the process is the same in order to do the initial wet felting. So I'm linking this video down below, even though it's not a third grade video, specifically so you can see how we wet felted this ball here, because this is the kind of wet felting that's going to be perfect for this grade, because uh, following this uh, project, you can then embroider your ball and you can see that we hand stitched this entire ball. This is one that I made as an example for my kids. My kids have yet to make one like this. Of course, you'd want your wet felted ball to be larger than this, but once you've wet felted your ball and it's dry thoroughly, then you can start on your embroidery. And I wanted to show you the embroidery floss that we have and just a really simple way uh, to organize it. You don't need this little contraption here which happens to be I think to hold dishes but if you just have a dowel then you can store your embroidery floss really easily this way and then it's 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 beautiful, it's visually pleasing, and it's also super easy to get the embroidery floss that you need. Because of the way that we've looped them on here, all you have to do is gently hold the bottom part here and then I've got two pieces here. Let's just get one piece and then you gently pull the one piece up and then that's it. You have your embroidery floss. I would just recommend making them longer than what I've made them. This might be a little bit too short for your projects, but you can determine the length that works well for the projects that you mostly do. And then you can use an embroidery needle uh, to do your embroidery work. So for, for this grade, you can start with your uh, you, with your stitching, but you're going to continue stitching into fourth grade and fifth grade with different kinds of stitching, like cross stitching is in fourth grade. So for third grade, you can just make them simple. And it's just to beautify the objects that are practical so that there's a sense of beauty related to your practical arts. All right, so let me put these aside and show you, uh, well, actually this was the crochet hook that you could use if you wanted to crochet rather than knit, but uh, we mostly do our uh, knitting rather than crocheting. Just wanted to point that out that that is something else that uh, you can do as well. All right, so let me show you the garments that my kids have made uh, over the years. This first one, uh, it's a tunic. It looks like a tunic here. It was really, really simple. I made the first one and then my son, who is now 11, made uh, another one. So we had a total of three. And this was actually done in conjunction with our ancient Roman unit from a few years ago, back when my uh, son who is 11 now was in third grade and then my older son was doing the ancient Roman unit. So it worked out really well that for that history unit, some of the handwork coordinated with my younger students. So even though I was doing one main lesson for both of them, 
they they each got something that worked for their grade level and so this is a really simple project to do this was made with old curtains so you don't need to go out and buy any kind of fancy material uh, this we did go out and buy material for we were making a lot of capes uh, a few years ago so we have about like 10 of them <laughs> made of various materials various lengths various colors but this one specifically my son wanted one that resembled a hobbit cape and so we went for this fabric. I don't know what this fabric is called, but the reason why I liked it is because it was soft on one side and you can clearly see that this is the inside. And also the best thing about this fabric is that it didn't fray versus some of the other fabrics that we had, they frayed miserably and they just look really shabby since we didn't do any of the fold over sewing and stitching we just skipped all that now this was done with a sewing machine and the sewing machine isn't introduced for the third grade student that's actually later so if you were to do something like this which actually only has a couple of parts that are sewn it's just a, a long piece of fabric but nothing else is sewn you do, you do want to do the casing here for your elastic and then the hood and so you could do this by hand it would take longer but then that way it would coordinate a little bit better with the third grade skill set. All right, so let's move on to some other practical skills for third grade. This is one of my favorite projects and we've done it not just for third grade but for many different grade levels and that is hand dipping candles. So I just want to show you these hand dip candles. Beautiful. They smell amazing. You want to use beeswax unless you're vegan, in which case you can use a soy based alternative. In general, the Waldorf philosophy urges you to use all natural products up till this point. We've been making our candles using old uh, beeswax candles like the pillars that just burn down and then there's the last couple of inches that can't be burned I've been collecting those and then we uh, melted them down in this candle making uh, pot and then we just made new candles but recently I did buy some beeswax and I want to share this one with you because I feel like the quality is really good and the smell is amazing these smell like sweet like honey, but also like beeswax. And when you've got this going on the stove, your whole house is going to smell absolutely amazing. This one is by uh, Topanga is the name of the company. I'm going to link this one down in the description box below because when you're looking for beeswax, it, you can find quite a variety of qualities and this quality was amazing. So I, I highly recommend the Topanga brand. This is uh, filtered, but it's not refined, I believe. And so you're getting this beautiful color. It's just gorgeous. And the smell is amazing. So we're going to be using these to make our candles for next year. So I'm recording this in the spring and we plan to make a number of candles now for our new school year for the fall and the winter. Now we don't always do the hand dip candles. Uh, these are super beautiful, but for us, for our purposes, they're not as practical since we don't have a candle holder for these beautiful tapers. So for us, we will also use just a glass jar and we'll pour in the candle wax into that glass jar and we'll just use that to burn. It's a little bit safer for us in our schoolroom, and uh, and they're really easy to make. One other thing that you're going to want to get is the wick for your candles. This one happens to be one especially made for candle dipping. In the past we've just used baker's twine which has worked just as fine. Now if you don't have one of these pots for candle dipping, you can make your own or do your own rather with just a pot and a jar and so you just get water in your pot and then you can go ahead and fill this up with your wax it'll take a little while for the wax to completely melt and then you can just remove the entire thing from the stove so it's a little bit safer and then the kids can dip their candles it's not going to be as easy as using one of these pots specially designed for candle dipping but i think that it works just as well and then the only other thing is that when when you're doing your candle dipping you need to have a lot of candle wax because as you dip your candles the level of the wax is going to get shorter and then you can see here how our candles have gotten shorter 
though they started out long when the pot was filled with wax and then they got shorter so what I've done in the past is I'll do the candle dipping and then when it gets too short to make any more tapers then I will fill up jars with the candle wax and then just make uh, you know candles within the jars you can also make pillars you can also make uh, tea lights but for us for our purposes I find that the ones in the jars work really great okay so let me share with you some of the projects you can do with your modeling beeswax or your potter's clay so this is a material that the children will have already been using since kindergarten or first grade it's modeling beeswax they come in these beautiful colors right now i only have two in here but this one came with a set of 12 uh, pieces in various colors they all smell amazing like beeswax and you can uh, use these in order to make little shapes like little birds or um, or an egg for instance to relate to the stories that that will have been told within the main lesson block. The only thing is that this takes a little while to warm up. And I found that though we really love working with beeswax in the winter, it just seems like a nice cozy activity. It's actually a lot easier to work with this in the summer when it's naturally going to be a little bit more pliable. You can see that that just broke right now. It's a kind of cool morning today. And so you just want to warm this up before you actually use it. And that can <laughs> require so much patience on the student's part. So some of the quick ways to warm this up are to actually put it under your armpit and that is a very warm spot on your body and very quickly your beeswax will get soft and then it'll be easier to work with but it will cool down quickly so if the students put it on the table and walk away from it then you're gonna have to start all over with it one of my kids favorite ways in order to soften beeswax which I do not recommend is that they like to hold it over the candle that we're burning for that morning and the problem with that is that it will cause it to to burn and get black spots on it and then the wax can then drip into the candle. So I don't recommend that, but I've got boys and that was one of their favorite activities to do is to warm it over the candle. So this is a, a great project, not just for the third grade. This is going to be a great handwork project, just something to keep your hands busy. It's a great tactile experience. It also smells wonderful and then you can make these projects and when you're done making the projects, you, they, you can reuse the wax again. You can uh, warm it up again and then reshape it into something else. So this is a great product to have on hand because it's going to last you a long time. Now, uh, eventually all the wax just kinds of ends up being in kind of a big mess. And so when the wax is no longer usable for projects, I will end up using it at, in the core of other projects that we do where I need it to be larger. Like if you were doing an egg like this, you could, you could start out with all your leftover wax and then the end you could put on some of the nicer newer wax. Another product that's a lot of fun to use and a little bit easier to warm up are the sheets of beeswax. The, the, my kids love working with these. They're thin. They will be easier and more pliable to work with. It's the same material, it's just that they're cut thin. This can also be used in order to cut out decorative shapes in order to decorate the eggs or to decorate your candles. You can also cut out shapes and put them onto your candles. Uh, there's a couple of metal like cookie cutters, but they're intended for wax that my kids love to use. You kind of got a glimpse of that in here where you saw that they use them to cut out the little uh, flower shape here. And there's another one that's a heart. And so you can use those in order to cut the shapes to decorate your various projects. You can also use this one just simply as modeling beeswax, but I would recommend buying the thicker ones if you definitely want to shape them into different objects. This one's really nice if you need them to be multifunctional and work to make shapes for your other projects. Now if you don't have the beeswax that's okay. You can use any kind of modeling clay and I've got some potter's clay to show you here as well as this air dry material which I actually don't know what it's made out of. I, I'm assuming that it's not an all natural product because this has stayed soft and pliable even though it's been out for weeks and weeks and weeks and this is just a lot of Fun to work with because it's not going to dry out. This is actually air dry clay, so it should at some point 
uh, form its shape and dry out, but we've noticed that we've been able to use this for a really long time and it stayed really nice and soft no matter the temperature. So this is another product. If, if you weren't concerned about getting an all natural product, this might be a good alternative. So I wanna show you this potter's clay. It's a light gray that dries even lighter. And the thing is, is that this one is meant to be fired in order for it to harden properly. So when you air dry this clay, it's going to end up with cracks and then it's gonna be uh, more prone to breaking. So that's something you wanna consider if you wanted to keep your projects long-term. You'll need to find out which kind of clay you're getting and how high the temperature is for your kiln. So this one happens to be one that needs to be fired at a really high temperature. And so if you wanted to get a clay to to harden at a lower temperature, you just want to make sure that you find out those details before you purchase it. So this kind of clay would be great just to work with, just to form different shapes, but it's not going to be good for long-term use if, once you dry it because it's not going to be very durable. So some, some of the projects you could do for third grade, in addition to just different modeling projects, you could do some practical projects like uh, molding bowls and plates because that would work really well for the third grade student. I would only recommend that you consider having those fired so that they, uh, they hold up over time. Okay. All right, so the last project I want to show you, I actually just have the materials to show you, and these are twigs, and they're quite long. Uh, this is one more project that the kids can do at the, in this grade, and that's just to work with found objects in nature, like twigs and bark, pine cones and acorns, to make little projects, uh, especially for, like, say, a little dollhouse, for doll furniture, and things like that. So this is going to be something that's going to work really well with the main lesson block on building shelters and other things because when you're outdoors building those shelters, naturally your kids are going to find a lot of other projects to do with those things in nature. Now, my boys in particular love collecting sticks and they mostly use them as walking sticks or as fighting sticks for dueling with one another. And so that's something that you will probably find if you've got boys or especially active girls. My daughter isn't as interested in doing those kinds of fighting games with sticks but I know that we have quite the assortment of sticks and let me just give you one bit of advice is that uh, kids get really attached to their sticks so be mindful of that if you think that one stick is the same as the other they actually really know which stick is theirs and uh, probably are really attached to them so I think that rounds out most of the projects and handwork that you can expect in the third grade year don't forget that you can see the other videos in this third grade series by tapping on the screen and if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis don't forget that you can find us on instagram at pepper and pine